Imperial Parametric 3.0, Lesson 3, Part 1. In this lesson, we're going to do some CAD calisthenics. We're literally just going to go through and create multiple parts, and we're going to use different versions of commands because there's always an option with, with a PTC product. Creo has two or three ways of doing almost everything. And it isn't the process of trying to learn everything. It's a process of just going through the motions and doing it multiple times. A lot of times people have questions about everything. Uh, I always say, don't ask why with the CAD system. Just keep doing it. The whys will disappear. Every time you try to figure something out, or especially if you compare it to SolidWorks or AutoCAD or some other system, uh, you're going to get in trouble because the comparison isn't valid and it's not necessary. So you got to come to this with a beginner's mind. So we're going to start off and we're going to do a variety of little simple parts. And uh, we're going to use mainly the defaults. Once in a while we might change a size, but in general, we'll just use the defaults so we get used to doing things over and over again. And the first one here is this um, uh, little rectangular shape with a shell out interior and a round. So we're going to start off with a new part and we're going to use our just whatever comes up. Yours will have part one basically. You don't have to change the name to this. So we're going to try to do this quickly in the sense of not worrying about typing so much. And I'm going to click OK. And you'll notice it comes in like a star. And this is because when we set our options before and doing the productivity uh, and we use the display button here, we changed our model display to isometric. And if you want, you can bring this back to triometric. After the first feature, then it's fine to have it on isometric. But we'll go back, and I'll click on No here. And here's how it normally looks when you start off. And let's check our settings here and the view. Everything is on. And go back over to Model. So. We're going to pre-select the front datum plane. You, so you tend to sketch on that first, but not always. It's not a rule. So extrude, and it put this into 2D orientation, rather than having to select this command here, which is sketch view. It's going to automatically do that for you. And I'm going to use my right mouse button, click on corner rectangle and click two positions, middle mouse button. And if we look at the part itself, we're going to sketch our little rectangle, and we're going to complete it. So we're going to complete this feature. Now, what I like to do at this point, normally you change your dimensions. We're not going to do any of that. Just Control D or go up to your view here and select standard orientation. And right mouse button, OK. And this says 216 inches. And you can see we'll just keep that as a default. So middle mouse button to complete the command. This is still selected. Now, if I go and I click on the front edge here, right mouse button, round becomes one of the options. And I'm then going to just drag this out like so. And middle mouse button. Now, this is a lot bigger than the one in the book, but that's not a big deal. This dimension here, if I made this um, a lot smaller, then it would look a little bit more like the book. So got my first shape in here. And you can see my first feature, second feature. And I'm going to click on the model. If your model is already selected, then you can just go over here and click one more time. And you'll see that the selection is the surface. If the model is not selected or a feature is not selected, you have to select it first and then move your cursor a little bit and select the top and go up to the shell tool middle mouse button left mouse button and that is the first feature so we're going to close that one let's see if there's anything else i think that's all we wanted to do for the very first part it is so we'll close that one. You can save yours. I'm not going to save them. Second one we're going to do is a, the draft. We call it the draft project. So again, a new. Just keep the default. 
And in this case here, we're sketching on the top datum, right mouse button, check to see what's there. And you'll see that the, the geometry commands are not available on the right mouse button at this point. So under model, we'll click on extrude again. And if this is in, uh, in a pictorial situation, you can still do your sketching. Circle, like so. I'll go back into Control D, you can see it. And if I go back into my sketch view, you can see it. And you can drag this thing. You want it to be a little bit smaller. Check. And let's make this one uh, maybe 50 and see what that looks like. That looks OK. And again, you're just going to use the defaults that you come up with. I'm going to go Control D to put this back into the view. And let's see what the next thing is. The next thing is for a draft. Now, one of the things is when you're creating this extrude, I'm going to go back and click on it and edit the definition of it. There is another option here, and that's to add a taper to it. So you can actually add a draft at this point. There is a limitation in the sizes. So we won't do that, but I did want you to see that option. So in this case here, we're going to put a draft. And you can come over and you can select the model and then move your cursor and select a surface. Or you can go up and just click on the draft tool. Now it knows. If I hit my right mouse button, you'll see that the surface selection is active. If I open up my references, you'll see that the surface selection is active. So let's say I want to pick on this front surface. And then the hinges, I've got to come over here and click in here or right mouse button, select the hinges. And the hinge that I'm going to use here is my top datum plane, like so. And then if I pull this away a little bit, you'll see I want to make that just a little bit of an angle, like so. And you can type in a value if you wish, but this is just easier to drag it. And I'm going to hit Enter. So you see I hit Enter, or I can click OK, or Middle Mouse button, or Check. All of those things are valid ways of ending the command. So go back over to the, the book, and we'll see we're putting in a chamfer. So again, I can go over here and click on the model, move my cursor, click on an edge, and it'll select it takes two steps but if I come up here and I just pick on chamfer then it knows I'll go over here and open this it knows it's looking for the first edge for the chamfer so now I only have to select one time so you can pre-select if you want and again I'm going to drag this out like so middle mouse button I'm going to use that one and I'm going to go control D to get it back into my triometric position here now I'm going to rotate this around with my middle mouse button. And again, I can come and I can click on the model and then move my cursor and click on the surface. Or I can click on shell without it being pre-selected and then come over and click on the surface right here. If I open this up, I will see that I have removed all the surfaces evenly. But if I want a non-default surface, I can click on the field here. It's the same thing as right mouse button and selecting it. And I'm going to click down here at the very bottom. And I'm going to make this one, um, let's make it three, a little bit thicker than the other one. So they're different thicknesses now. I'll give it check this time. And I have my model. Now, if I wanted to go over to the view, I click on section, I could just select one of the choices there, and you'll see it cut. And you can see the thickness here has changed. And you can spend some time in here if you want. You can change colors, and you can um, even show a little view, a little 2D view of it. Let's see. You can put on the 3D dragger and put a little view over here. You can even rotate that view of the section. A lot of stuff you can do with it. So 
Again, I'm going to finish this one, middle mouse button, and the section stayed active. So if I come over here and click on that section, right mouse button, I can deactivate it. So that's component number two. We will close that. And let's look and see what the next one is. This one is a, we're going to change the sketch, add a few more entities in the sketch. So new, default, I'm going to pre-select front. And I'm going to go to my model tab, extrude. And right mouse button, corner rectangle. Right mouse button, fill it and pick a couple positions on the fillet like so. I mean, on the two lines, vertical and horizontal. Creo says that a fillet is something you put in a sketch, a round is something that you put in on a model. They basically are the same thing when the feature is completed. So you have a check. I can change this distance if I want, like so. And I could actually make this symmetrical if I wanted also. Or put my cursor here. Right mouse button and make it symmetrical. Control D. Check to finish. Now, it's still active. You can see the selected extrude. At this point, I'm going to click on axes and then come over and select this curved surface. And it's going to put a datum axis down the middle. When I do that, you'll see A1 is still active. So now I'm going to give another command. I'm going to go over to my hole tool. And because the axis is already selected, it'll make that one of the two items necessary to place the hole. If I hold down my control key and click on the front surface here, it'll know to start there. If I might put my cursor over the drag handle right mouse button, I can select through all for my hole. And I could make this bigger or smaller if I wanted to. Enter to finish it. That's one of the options to finish the command. And now this one, let's put in a shell. So click on the model, move your cursor, and then click on the surface. Come up and select shell and check and there's my shelled part. Now looks a little odd maybe. So let's take the shell and drag it in front of the hole in the model tree. And you'll see that now the shell propagates before the hole. Therefore, the hole doesn't have that buildup around it. The walls are gone. This concludes the third one. Let's close that. And let's see what the fourth one is. The fourth one is okay, model four. New part. Select the front view. I mean the front datum. Model, tab, extrude, right mouse button, line, and simply sketch. As you do, look at the constraints. It says it's vertical. That says it's horizontal. And I always pull my cursor off, and I finish with my middle mouse button off the end here, and then I click one more time. And if it shades, it means it's a valid section. And I'm going to click on, or I'm going to select a pictorial view, so control D, or just go standard orientation, and check. And again, this time I'll go up here and I'll make it symmetrical. Drag it a little bit. Check. Now, I want to cut a hole in here, so I'm going to pre-select this surface click on extrude and I'm going to click on right mouse button references and I'm going to select the datum plane going down the middle as a reference. 
right mouse button. Corner rectangle. And I'm going to put a rectangle in here. Middle mouse button. And there's my section. Now, when I check here, it's thinking it's a solid. So I want to go right mouse button, remove material, or click up here in the dashboard. And I want it to go down and right mouse button through all. Then I'm going to complete that feature. But you can see it's a little odd because it's leaving a portion of it uncut here. So what could I do for that? I want to go back in and change it. So I click on it, right mouse button, edit the definition of it, and go up to options. Under options, I've already selected through all, but I want to go through all in both directions. Check. And while we're here, if we want, we could go and practice our appearance. You can check on, you can select some other items here and see what's going on. Got paint. How about paint? And now it gives us some paint colors. Got some nice reflection too. So that ends the fourth one. And this is the end of part one of lesson three. We'll continue on with the parts in the next, um, in the next lecture.